Twelve hundred. Um, the, the amount recently is probably about twenty-five thousand. All right. So it's a little less. That's including us ramen only. So if you include shops that also serve ramen in addition, we're looking at somewhere closer to fifty, sixty, eighty, some eighty thousand, like pre-COVID, I believe, was the numbers that they had. So that's compared to here in America, which is about about twelve, fourteen hundred. So significantly less, which is a problem for me. I don't know about you guys, but it's a problem for me. Um, so today we're going to kind of go on a magical Roman adventure, um, going all the way back to the 1800s um, when the first kind of Roman crawled out of the soup, um, went into the soup really. But uh, uh, so it's going to be fun, and all the way up to today and, and tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, going back, um, so about 1868, 18, late 1800s roughly, um, Japan ended uh, the, the Meiji period basically. So what happened was they were very closed off up until this point, and afterwards they were all like, oh, let's open our ports up to the world, let's see what's going on out there. Um, so economically uh, and you know, physically, people, foreigners started to enter the country very close obviously is China so they came over and they made uh, they made lo mein noodles as we kind of know them so you know wheat noodles um, they were nice they didn't really like them they were called Sheena noodles at one point which is not really politically accepted because um, it's kind of their China noodles so uh, eventually uh, we kind of Japanese kind of adapted their own recipe and uh, made their own kind of nice medium sized noodles, you know, they had udon which was super thick, and they had soba which is really thin, and they're kind of different things, but they found that the lomi really worked well in soup, um, they were nice and chewy and they didn't, you know, easy to slurp up. Uh, so yeah, so, so, so all over, all over, all over uh, port cities in Japan, you, you know, you'd have little wooden carts, uh, vendors who would go and they would take, they'd set up and they'd call out to the workers that were there working the boards or working factories near because that's just where all the, everything was going down. Uh, and they did that forever, so, so it was huge. There, was, there could have been, I mean, there was hundreds of shops in Tokyo, uh, which, you know, doesn't seem like a lot, but back then Tokyo was a lot of shacks and not the massive metropolis that it is today. Um, and then uh, turn of the century comes and 1920s, 1930s hang around and uh, World War II happened. And that led to very severe rationing of wheat, which was of course the main ingredient in the noodles. Um, everyone was hungry anyway, you know, it was a big thing. Uh, so, sorry. Uh, so, ramen, a lot of ramen noodle shops, a lot of, a lot of carts closed up. So it wasn't, it became very much a luxury for many years. Um, then onto the scene comes a Taiwanese immigrant by the name of Momofu Gondo. Um, he was an inventor and a, and a chef. He started a company to basically produce salt in the 40s and then he made dried fish and he tried to make healthy foods for people. But he really, um, really wanted to help people and, and make sure that everyone had enough to eat. Um, Quoting him, he said that the world is peaceful only when everyone has enough to eat. Um, so that's kind of his guiding mission in, in life. Uh, so in 1958, he's trying to make a uh, easily accessible ramen noodles. Usually shops are charging a good amount of money for real ramen noodles. So he wanted to make one everyone could eat. Uh, so watching his wife making tempura and drying out the batter, she kind of came up with this new method for drying noodles and making them instant, uh, which kind of started his company, Nissan Foods. Um, if you don't mind. Little ones, it's a big, uh, still work, I mean, he's been like that forever. Uh, ever since 19, ever since 1958, 1971, he made the very first cup noodle ramen, which is what we all know. We're all college students, so I think any of us probably know about ramen and how awesome it is to have. Um, 
So yeah. Uh, and he did this. He did this whole thing until 2007. That's when he. That's when he passed. Um, two years previously for that, he did finish. Um, <coughs> he finished his space romp, which was enjoyed uh, on the International Space Station by Japanese astronauts. So the first uh, noodles to be in space in zero gravity. So it's uh, pretty great. Um, so it's a pretty great future for ramen overall. Um, you know, today it's come a long way. It's been 65 years since kind of that first batch of ramen came. And, you know, you have like, so many different kinds and all these are made in different countries. These are from Korea, which are spicy chicken and cheese ramen and black garlic ramen. And, you know, it's become very iconic, this wrap snack ramen. So, um, and, you know, they're constantly, his company as well as all of us are constantly innovating, making different things. Uh, stir fry noodles, Thai yellow curry ones. Um, we even have a children's book about them to cook on them as well. So, all kinds of things. Uh, so, yeah, so all this, I mean, over the past couple of decades, you know, here in America, it's been interest has been peaked. You know, ramen noodles are becoming, this isn't something you could have gotten, probably gone and bought 20 years ago. Um, but now it's more and more different things that are happening. Um, uh, which I think is really kind of leading to people getting interested in more real, real or scratch-made ramen. Uh, you can find it at some restaurants. It's not really the, the artisan kind that people dedicate their entire lives to, but hopefully, and if, hopefully in the next few decades we'll have that available. You could walk down the street and get ramen that was the broth was made and simmered for three or four days and the noodles were made fresh and it just becomes the best ramen experience of your life. Um, so, you know, it's over, ramen as we know it kind of is about 100 years old but it's very, very young still as far as culinary goes. Um, so there's a lot more to do, a lot more things we can think of and, and uh, hopefully there's people like us that can kind of come to elevate it to a different to hot cuisine or beyond. Um, at the end of the day, it's uh, ramen is just a really warm, hearty, uh, comforting meal that really kind of comes together in a single bowl or two if you're like me and you get really hungry. 